What if a macro keyboard had 10 tiny LCD screens, a secondary display, voice commands, AI, and a small Linux brain for just $85? This is the MK10. Today I'll show you exactly what it does, what's great, what's not, and if it really beats a simple macro keyboard. For full disclosure, Waveshare has sent me this product free to review. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Nerdcave. The MK10 is a multifunctional AI smart control panel. It comes in either black or white, with 10 mechanical switches each having its own small LCD in front and a secondary LCD. Setting up the device is very straightforward. Plug in the USB-C cable that is provided and also connect the Wi-Fi USB dongle. And then just install the provider software. Once you have installed the software, there is a bit more configuration that you need to do. But luckily for us, Waveshare provides a fully detailed wiki showing you all the steps. So in this video, we're going to focus on the software side. We're first going to look at what's the default theme that comes with a device, how easy is it to create your own theme, and then we're also going to look at how do we set up the AI and how reliable is the AI when using it with this device. This is a default theme that comes with the device. The first key show a few Chinese websites and the second key shows website for Western users. Now it is pretty clear that this device was designed for Chinese users in mind, especially when we look at the AI, which will use our Zhi AI Assistant. Let's continue further looking at the default theme. This key shows your system performance like your CPU, RAM, hard disk and so on. This GIF key just shows a bunch of cool GIFs for demonstration. This app key will go open the GitHub repository for the software. The wiki button will either take us to the Chinese wiki website or the English one. When not using the device for work, you can use this clock mode that will show a cool animation showing the time. The last button in the default theme is just a bunch of Windows hotkeys. You can also find different themes when you go to the store and select the theme tab. There is also templates for different keys to show your computer performance. We also have themes for our secondary screen. And we have a bunch of plugins that we can use with different software that will work with our device. Now with the documentation provided by Waveshare, it is quite easy to go edit and create a new theme. So you'll see here on the side, we have everything we can do. We can go change the background settings. We can go do system inputs if you want to emulate a keyboard or do a QMK screen, string, sorry. And we have system file control. So if you want to open a web page, open a folder or file and so on. Um, here we have system tools, so if you wanted to create like an OBS, like stream recording and all those type of things. And here we also have page switching, so if you wanted to create a folder, just like here when we had all the websites with the GIFs and each one you can then edit. So let's say we wanted to create a new folder, so we're going to click here on create folders and then just drag and drop this in here. This will create this folder here and when we click on this we can give either give it a title and we can also go change the icon here by opening the local file. So there's quite a lot of things you can do. It will take me too long to go through each one, but you should not have any problem setting up this device to act exactly the way you want it to do for your workflow. I am busy creating my own theme, so I will see if there's a way I can upload this to the store. Now for the AI part, like I said, it does use Zaoxi, so let's quickly look at how does the AI model work on this device. Here we are on the website. You will first go add a device and then you will pair it to your device. And here we see this one is actually called Taiwanese Girlfriend. So this is the model that comes with Waveshare, but you can edit this. So originally it's going to be a girl voice and it will speak lovely and all flirty. So a Taiwanese girlfriend, but I change it to a US one. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to configurate role. And then here you will be able to change the background. So you can give your AI assistant a personality. And here you can also change the language model. Now originally it was using this Gwen free, but this has some limitations. So it is faster. But if you, for example, ask it to open youtube.com, it will not do that, you know, because of restrictions. But DeepSeek and Daobao is quite good. Here, let me also show another thing. Here you can change the voice. And here is also some role templates. There's an English tutor. Like I said, it was made for Chinese users first in mind. But you can tweak everything you want to hear. 
and then click Save. So now on our device, we're gonna go to the secondary screen. So let me just go open that, click on the store. And here on the secondary screen, and we want to use this number 20 as it will allow us to connect to Xiaoxi. So there will be like simple animation when we talk to the AI. I did see they also added this one here, which I have not used before. It's also just free downloads. So let's give this one first a try. So here on our secondary screen, we'll just right click here and click load. And then we can go select that file and upload this one and then we just can click save and run but before we do this we need to first go enable these two buttons this one will enable switching and the status so i'll just drag in these two so i'll replace this one and replace this one and now i'll click and save and run and let's have a quick look at the ai so currently the ai is disabled we can enable it here and then we can press here to have a talk with it hi there i'm sam Sam, can you open YouTube.com? YouTube is now open for you. Is there anything specific you'd like to watch? I changed my mind. Can you please open Notepad on the Windows application? Sure. Which Windows application would you like me to open for Notepad. you? Notepad. Open Notepad, please. Yes. Notepad is now open. Thank you. Let me know if you need anything else. I'm just going to disable it again. Even though this device does have AI and it can do a lot of things for you, there is sometimes when it doesn't always understand you. This can be due to your accent or maybe you're not talking fast enough and it does listen to your conversation. So you do need to remember to disable it because sometimes I will just be making a video and then all of a sudden it will start talking. So I think the AI is nice, but for me, I don't really need that because I would rather prefer to have a button for Notepad or YouTube and all those things. But I guess if you wanted to ask a simple question or like a fun fact or something, you can quickly talk to the AI. But we do know AI is not always perfect, but it is a very cool feature. So what do you think? Is this device worth $85? And what would you do if you had something like this? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.